Well Productivity. This module focuses on well productivity, providing learners with an in-depth understanding of how well performance is quantified. It begins with the definition and calculation of the Productivity Index, PI, a key parameter in evaluating a well's ability to produce fluids. The module explores the absolute open flow, AOF, concept, including its significance for oil and gas wells. Learners will examine the inflow performance relation, IPR, for an oil well, learning how to interpret IPR plots and curves to assess well performance. Additionally, the module covers various well testing methods, such as deliverability tests, back pressure tests, and different types of isochronal tests, including modified isochronal tests, which help assess the well's production capacity under varying conditions. By the end of this module, participants will be able to calculate productivity indices, understand AOF, and apply performance testing techniques to evaluate well deliverability. Productivity Index The Productivity Index, PI, is equal to the oil or gas flow rate, Q, in barrels per day, or standard cubic feet per day, divided by the difference between the reservoir initial pressure, PI, and the reservoir flowing pressure, PWF, in PSI. The unit of the productivity index is then barrels per day per PSI, in the case of an oil well, or standard cubic feet per day per PSI, in the case of a gas well. Absolute Open Flow The maximum flow potential, or absolute open flow, AOF, is the rate at which a well would produce at zero sand face, bottom hole, back pressure. It is the maximum flow rate a well could theoretically deliver with zero pressure at the middle of the perforations. The term is commonly abbreviated as AOF, AOFP, or OFP. This is a theoretical rate that cannot be measured and probably not achieved. Oil Well AOF In the case of an oil well, the maximum flow potential, or absolute open flow, AOF, is obtained by plotting the bottom hole flowing pressure versus the production flow rate on a linear plot. This plot is called the inflow performance relation, IPR plot or IPR curve. The inflow performance relation, or IPR plot, is obtained by plotting the bottom hole flowing pressure, PWF, in PSI, versus the gross production rate, Q, in barrel oil per day. This point here is the bottom hole shut-in pressure. This is the true IPR curve. The slope of the true IPR curve will give us the maximum flow potential, or absolute open flow, AOF. The slope line of the true IPR curve represents the ideal IPR curve. The slope value of the IPR curve is the productivity index PI. Gas well AOF. In the case of a gas well, the maximum flow potential, or absolute open flow, AOF, is obtained by plotting the pressure squared difference versus the production flow rate on a log-log plot. Deliverability tests are done to determine flow capacity and to predict flow rate decline over the life of a well. Gas wells with AOF greater than 50 million standard cubic feet per day are classified as high productivity wells. Gas wells with AOF less than 50 million standard cubic feet per day are classified as low or average productivity wells. In the case of a high productivity gas well, a back pressure test is performed to evaluate well performance. Here's the general procedure for conducting this test. First, we begin with a cleanup phase, which can last anywhere from a few hours to up to 24 hours, depending on the well conditions. This step helps clear out any initial impurities or water that may affect the results of the test. After the cleanup, the initial shut-in phase begins. This should be twice the duration of the cleanup phase. The shut-in phase allows the pressure to stabilize before we begin gathering meaningful data. Next, we flow the well at four different rates. For each flow rate, we will test it for about four to eight hours, adjusting the choke as needed and ensuring that we stabilize the well at each rate. This helps us understand the well's performance at different flow conditions and pressures. Finally, we perform a final shut-in for a period of 12 to 24 hours. During this time, 
we record pressure and other important data to evaluate the long-term performance and stability of the well. For a low productivity gas well, an isochronal pressure test is typically conducted to evaluate the well's performance. Let's break down the procedure. First, we begin with a cleanup phase, which lasts anywhere from a few hours to up to 24 hours. This step helps remove any initial water or impurities in the well, preparing it for the test. Following the cleanup, we perform the initial shut-in phase. This phase is typically twice the duration of the cleanup phase, allowing the pressure to stabilize for accurate measurements. Then, we flow the well at four different rates. Each flow rate is maintained for four to eight hours. Between each flow rate, there will be stabilized shut-in periods of six to 12 hours. These shut-in periods allow the well to stabilize, ensuring that we can accurately measure the well's pressure and flow characteristics at each rate. The final flow, the fourth flow rate, extends until we reach full stabilization, ensuring the data is reliable and consistent. Lastly, a final shut-in period is conducted for a longer duration, typically between 34 to 72 hours. This long shut-in allows us to assess the well's behavior over an extended period and fully evaluate its pressure and production potential. For a low productivity gas well, the modified isochronal pressure test is typically performed to assess the well's performance and reservoir behavior. Here's how the process works. The first step is the cleanup phase, which lasts anywhere from a few hours to up to 24 hours. This phase ensures the well is free from any water or contaminants that could affect the test results. After the cleanup, we carry out the initial shut-in. The shut-in period is usually twice the duration of the cleanup, allowing the pressure to stabilize for accurate measurements. The well is then flowed at four different rates, each for an equal duration of four to eight hours. Unlike other methods, the shut-in periods between the flow stages are kept equal, regardless of whether the pressure has stabilized. This consistency allows for a more standardized comparison of each flow rate. The final flow, the fourth flow rate, extends until the pressure reaches full stabilization, ensuring we capture the well's true production potential. Finally, a final shut-in is performed, lasting from 34 to 72 hours. This extended shut-in period allows us to further assess the well's behavior over time and gather a more comprehensive dataset on its performance. The modified isochronal pressure test for low-productivity gas wells is designed to be more time-efficient compared to the traditional isochronal test. Unlike the standard isochronal test, where the pressure must stabilize at each flow rate, the modified version doesn't require waiting for stabilization at each step, except for the final flow. This approach significantly saves time and reduces costs, which is particularly beneficial when the well's productivity is low and the testing needs to be expedited. However, while it is more efficient, the results may be less accurate due to the lack of stabilization at each individual flow rate. Despite this, it still provides valuable information about the well's performance over the course of the test. Recent software products for well test data interpretation have significantly improved the flexibility and efficiency of test programs. These advancements allow for a more tailored approach to well testing, optimizing the process for specific needs. For example, traditional test methods such as the back pressure test and isochronal test can now be modified through these software tools to reduce the number of flow periods, thus shortening the overall test duration. This is particularly useful in situations where time and cost efficiency are critical, providing a balance between accuracy and test efficiency. By leveraging these software solutions, engineers can enhance well test design, save time, and still obtain valuable reservoir data. Thanks so much for watching. That wraps up today's presentation. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us keep creating more content like this. See you in the next video.